If you guys remember, earlier this year we made a video on applying textures to 3D prints. That was fun, but the tests we did were quite simple. I think someone called them buckets. So this time we're going to design that bag as something that we could possibly use. And here's what we got. I call it the teardrop because of its shape, and that's mostly what it made me do while I was designing it. I honestly can't believe that something like this doesn't exist already. There is nothing like this on printables or thingiverse or anything. I wanted to have cute pastel colors, but someone wanted black and white. But black and white is awesome! I think it would look really great in bright colors though. Alright, roll the photo shoot. By the way, in the last video, a few people mentioned that Raise 3 ds Idea Maker Slicer has a feature for including textures in your print. I've tried this, and it works really, really well. It even has a mapping selection feature, so if your mesh is not perfectly uniform and can compensate for this, it does have issues with blending the textures at corners or borders, and this you don't get with Blender if you are unwrapping your mesh correctly. But it is still an incredibly useful tool to have. And if you're interested, I have linked it down below. I really wish other slicers had this feature. Rich Corinthian leather. So back to the bag. And same rules. We're designing it out of TPU with that pretty leather texture. Why TPU? It's tough as bananas. So the main issues I had here designing this was, well, one, designing a complicated shape for TPU. And two, printing really thin sheets of TPU. Complicated parts can be hard for TPU. TPU doesn't like to be complicated. If you're printing something that has lots of travel moves and retractions, then you're going to get a lot of stringing on your print. And if you're using supports, there can be scarring. If you're printing TPU and you have a lot of stringing, your best friend is this, a heat gun. It's my heat gun. Someone needs to put it back in its place after using it. Talking to you, nameless videographer. You don't have to use a heat gun. You can actually just use a hairdryer. Just blow some hot air on those stringies and they will melt together and make it super easy to remove. Stringing aside, if I design a part that is parallel and flat to the build surface, then I can't really get that leather texture. That leather texture is imparted when the nozzle moves perpendicular to the wall. So if I have a vertical wall, then that's fine. I can get the texture because the nozzle moves perpendicular to this on the X and Y axis. But if the thing I'm printing is flat, then the nozzle needs to move perpendicular to this, which means it just goes up and down on the Z axis, which just creates lots of blobs and stringy textures. You can't get that leather texture. I actually tried to print this in separate parts so I could avoid this problem. Basically, I could print all of the walls so that they were vertical and I could put the leather texture everywhere. However, that was difficult because you needed to assemble it yourself. And I thought the best way to do this would be to sew it together, which was a mega downer. And I'm really glad I didn't do that. Color was also an issue. I wanted to have some variation in color. I didn't want it to be one solid monolithic part that is just one color. So I have some options. One, I could paint it afterwards or two, I could use an AMS type device. And painting, well, that's just more post-processing afterwards. I wanted to avoid that. And AMS type devices are sort of allergic to TPU. So conundrum. I decided to print these parts separately, but second conundrum. TPU, other flexible things, don't like to be glued together. Forces are a little more complicated when you're dealing with something that's not so rigid. You have to contend with the adhesive dealing with peel and shear forces. This is what happens when I peel one bonded TPU part from another. It comes off in a second with normal CA glue. 
My advice for peel protection is design it so it's not going to happen. Use an adhesive if you have to, but don't rely on it. This is what happens when I try to detach the parts when pulling them from opposite ends. This is an example of undergoing a shear force. Not as bad. Uh, if you're unsure about which resin or glue to use for the material that you have, then you can just let us know. We have a ton of adhesives in the shop that are suitable for a wide range of materials. Smother yourself in leather. So the parts that I wanted to have a different color are the border parts in white here. And I've designed a sort of little angle for the parts to slot in so that it glues well with the epoxy. I've also included a little hat above it. This kind of locks it in, in place and prevents any incidence of peel. The other issue I had was printing thin parts. I wanted this to be as thin as possible, but apparently TPU is flexible. And the thinner the parts are printed, the more chance of print artifacts. When a nozzle extrudes PLA, it cools and solidifies and becomes rigid very quickly. The same cannot be said for TPU. You extrude it, it cools, it hardens a bit, but it's still really, really flexible. And as your nozzle moves, it can create some drag and pull some of the extruded filament, causing problems like Z banding or other issues. The higher your part is, the more likely this is to happen. So I had to make these sheets relatively thick. At the thickest, they are six millimeters. And with that, you shouldn't have any problems printing it. The downside is, well, it's, it's thicker, so it's harder to bend. I also wanted to give the bag a little cover. So as I'm printing with TPU in relatively thick sheets, folding this when you close it is a bit tricky. So I designed a thin TPU hinge at the back and actually just heat formed the cover with my best friend, the heat gun. So it fits really nicely over the bag. And let's just throw in a nice decorative button. Maybe I could also add like a little magnetic lock on the back of the cover. We have a bunch of magnets in the shop, by the way. Their magnets, their applications are basically unlimited. Check them out. For on the go, you have this nice TPU strap and these brass look clamps. And these are actually held in with printed threads that screw into the inside and are locked in from there. And threads are also difficult to print if you're basing it around something like a metric thread with a low pitch and a large overhang on the thread angle. You need good tolerance for those and you need good cooling for the overhang. So I used a much larger pitch and less overhang for the thread angle. It is easier this way and it works just as well. Genuine polyurethane. So that is the design and it is online if you want to download and print it yourself. But I have also included a textured sheet design. So if you want to, you can use this without doing the whole blender rigmarole of creating textures on TPU. It's already there for you. You can work with it, cut it and make your own design if you want. You can literally just cut parts out on CAD, but I have also made this file small enough to be used on Tinkercad. A Tinkercad has a really short learning curve and it's just really easy to use, but you can only upload files under 25 megabytes. So this file has been made compatible for its use. Also, you don't really need to do any CAD to design something like this. There are a million patterns and tutorials on how to make your own leather parts online. So you can use those and the textured sheet that I prepared and just cut out whatever you want and make your own leather item that way. Artificial leather is sometimes made from vinyl, but more commonly polyurethanes are used. TPU is a polyurethane. It's a TPU. It's a thermoplastic polyurethane. So it's very similar material and the same rules apply. Pantafer. I'm content with this, but not totally happy. I, I don't like the border parts. These are the parts that are glued on and it's sort of the weak point of this design. Don't get me wrong, it's sturdy, but if someone drops a genuine Acme anvil on it, it's toast. I also wanted extra color, but I really don't want to paint it and I can't use an AMS with TPU. We really need a tool changer in the shop. Additionally, we're not able to print really, really thin parts for maximum flexibility. In fact, TPU is not really that suitable. It's not that flexible, not as flexible as cloth. The more I do this thing, the more I really want to explore printing something more akin to fabric. And I'm not really talking about those NASA fabrics that you can get online. They're really cool, but they're not exactly practical. I'm talking about real flexible fabric. 
Now, this has been done before. There was a startup in the Netherlands called Electroloom who designed a 3D printer that can electro spin fabric. Unfortunately, commercially, it didn't work, but they still made a pretty cool vest. And there are obviously such things as auto looms, but I really want to use filament or resin to do this. And I have actually started. This is nylon, uh, liquid nylon. It's nylon dissolved in solvent. Oh God, that's really acrid. If you let the solvent evaporate, it will harden. This is sort of like acetone smoothing with ABS, but in the end, I want to get fibers out of this and maybe 3D print some fabric. Thanks for tuning in and checking out our video, guys. If you have any questions about texturing 3D prints or printing with TPU, then let us know in the comments below. You can also send us an email. You can also join us on our Discord server, where we gave a special prize to our Discord members quite recently. The link is down below. We'll see you guys next time. Later.